I'm just going to go straight into visual merchandising. So I always like to start off my visual merchandising with this little item here. Um, sometimes you think that you need to just put everything in. I should just crop all the things that I want to sell. Let's just put them in the window. Or you might be one of those folks who has uh, your window dressed up and it's been the same window for a year, for two months, for three months, and just all of those wonderful things that you want to sell are in the window. But picture a stadium like this one, you know? Um, pick one person out that if you're walking by this group uh, picture very fast, who could you pick out, uh, look at all the details, tell the story about who they are, get a picture and want to bond with them. It would be very difficult, right? And so when you have too many focal points in your window, that becomes a major error for you. So we need to tone it down and really think a little bit more strategically. And of course that goes back to our marketing. Who's the client that we're trying to attract and what's going to interest them? Because really at the end of the day, it's less about what we think is uh, wonderful and magical and more about what that client thinks. So gathering that information so that we can kind of translate what that would look like in a window. So what's the focal point here? Not much if you're putting too much in the window. So I wanted to start off with like a quick little example of why it's so important to not just dress it and go. It highlights the unique personalities about your store. You're a small business owner. And so we can really customize it. We really can do a theme for the neighborhood. We can really make it special so they know who we are. We could engage those potential clients to stop, turn, and enter our store. Because really at the end of the day, that's the important part. We want to get them into the store. And the, the window is one of those really low-lying fruits that could really uh, help us with that. You know, because we all go by that really adorable store and say, wow, I really like to go into that store. Look, it, it's so adorable. Look at the window. It's so cute. Uh, look at that product, right? And that's that conversation starts at the sidewalk. And then remember, it's not just the sidewalk, but you're also catching cars going by. If you're lucky enough to have a stoplight close to you and they need to slow down, they're slowing down and uh, the riders are looking at the store, looking out. We want to get their attention so that there is that locked in thought, wow, cute store. Let me come back the next time in the neighborhood or when I pull over, wow, look at that window, let me come in, right? So you need to really speak to them right at the sidewalk, right at the, the uh, door, okay? And of course, it's gonna, we want them to be, uh, to want them to keep you top of mind at all times, even if they don't come in now and make a purchase. It's about making sure that you start that relationship and, that, and have your personality shine, basically. Right. So you got to remember, you're in a very competitive landscape right now. There's the big guys. But, you know, one of the things that makes you special as a smaller, um, more private owner is that you're able to change. Remember, a lot of these large stores, the let's say the Old Navy's, the Rosses, Nordstrom's, they have very locked in plans to try to make sure that everything's synchronized from store to store. Here's a plan. Put this here. Do here. Done and done. But really, at the end of the day, you're also competing really directly with those folks right on your street, right? So you're really competing primarily with other small businesses. Um, you're competing, of course, with the big box guys because, you know, they're putting a lot of money into this. And, of course, the chains as well, but primarily the folks that are right next to you. They're making decisions as they're walking down the street. Which store should I go into? So your most direct competition is going to be the small business owners. And if you're in a great walkabout, there's a lot of them around you. However, luckily and sadly, most small businesses don't pay a lot of attention to creating that effective window space. And so if you're having this discussion now, if you're attending this class now, you're already feeling that, you know, I should be making some changes to my window and what's the plan? How should I do this? You know, of course, a lot of the big guys are too busy. They have a very overly uniformed. It didn't always used to be that way. 
whoever, whatever visual merchandising person was working in Nordstrom's or Old Navy had some reins of over making this, the window very um, customized, very effective to what's going specifically on in the neighborhood, but they don't do that anymore. So that's also in our favor as well. And, you know, of course, sometimes it gets a little boring. It is what it is. We're selling this done. But for us as small business owners, we really want to create more of an interest, more of a personality and grab them, right? Okay, so let's jump into like a quick review of marketing. So some of you might have made the marketing class, some of you might not have. However, let's go through this. I'm repeating it because marketing is going, is the spillover point. You know, getting to know your clients is going to be important as you design a site or a window or a create a plan or decide what you're going to buy uh, to put in the store is going to be based on your marketing and really primarily to know your clients. So let's do a quick review through that. Okay, so who is a client that you want to target? Before you make your merchandising plan, I'd like you to really revisit this thought line and really think about it. Who is the target audience? Who's your target customer? Understand what excites them and um, will help them to pull, to pull them into your store from the sidewalk. And again, you're thinking, well, Paul, how am I going to get to know this? I want you to get to start listening. Start listening to what they're saying to you. Because remember, as store owners, you're on the front lines of the economy. They come into you, they pick up a pair of glasses and they say, oh, I like this because um, it's maybe too expensive. It's um, it's just right. Oh, um, I wish you had more colors. Um, I want more of this. I want more. You're hearing them. If you're doing your uh, sales strategy just right, you're engaging them in conversation. And why shouldn't you have a store? You should be speaking to folks. You should be excited that the fact that they're in your store. And so those natural conversations is your research area and frankly you should be writing those down the things that they're saying to you you should be writing them down and that's your research because we could read it out of a book i could send you to the library get online check out things that you could do right but the the real um issue is that you know that those items once they're in a book are going to be gone and outdated but you have active information right now so i'd like you to really get to know this right um, I see three questions. I'm going to get to a stopping point at marketing and I'll start looking at that, okay, and, and answering some questions. So understanding your clients, I usually do a visual for this portion of it because looking at these children, they're not your clients. The parents are your clients. But to give you a great example, even delineate, breaking these down into little groups, it's going to be parents, you know, maybe more money, more educated, um, doctors, secretaries, teachers, you know, you're going, going to have all these different groupings and they're going to make decisions based on very different things. So understanding who they are is going to, we want to translate to that to the window. If these guys are your clients, they're at a point now where they have their own money, they're not very brand loyal, they're excited about so much, but even here they're telling you what they want and you should be listening. At this point, you know, a lot of them are actually paying for college on their own, they're, uh, you know, maybe even uh, supporting themselves completely. Uh, after going through 2008, it's a very different world now. And also making some decisions about how they're purchasing. Do you know what this customer is saying to you and what their wants and needs are? Then we get to this stage. We're off on our own. We have uh, possibly a college loan to pay off. You know, we're going on tour. We're getting our first jobs. We're making decisions at a more higher level as far as moving ourselves to our future. What is this customer asking for? They're asking for, are they asking for quality, more customer service? Um, they don't care, less customer service. Again, that will only happen if you're listening to them. And then this client, really at the end of the day, now you're looking at a peer. So they have double salaries, right? So they're enjoying their lives. They're finally out of college. The career is going well. Um, now they can spend, and if they're in a household together, maybe spending one salary, saving one salary. The mindset is very different here depending on who your client is, they're going to be making very different decisions based on who they are and what their wants and needs are. Do you understand that as you're about to dress your windows? Um, 
Now they're at this point, you know, money might be a little bit different. They're trying to invest more, buy a house, taking care of the child, what have you. Again, understanding who this client is to this client. When the kids are out, they're empty nesters and they're making decisions possibly more for themselves, you know? So I really want you to get guys to take a chance to get to know your clients, know them by name, um, you know, because I'll, I'll tell you one thing, once you convert them in the store, they're telling you so much, they're bringing other folks in. They, by the way, become part of your marketing efforts. So let's jump straight into window display and some things that I need you to have. All right, so step one, it sounds like, you know, the, the very basic and very obvious, but once you do your window and you're getting ready to do your window, I want you to have some basic tools that's going to help you to create a story. So measuring tape, scissors, industrial staplers so you can staple things in and be able to remove them very easily. Two-sided tape so you can put things up and remove it so that you're not doing these permanent displays but something that you can quickly put up and take down. Hammer and nails. Um, I dropped this one in, however, I'm a bigger fan of the two-sided tape uh, hooks, push pins, because we can take things down and put them back up. And of course, utility knife, glue gun, glue sticks, screwdrivers, screws, pen, pencil, markers, notepads, push pins. Um, I usually suggest clear only because, again, if we put it up, we want it to reflect whatever is around it. Assemble your props. You know, as you're going out there, this does not have to cost you a lot of money. So basically what I'm suggesting to you is that I would like you to have a little package of, of items to, at the ready for your window so that you can create this, uh, this image, this look, this window display. Assembling props allows you to have just a few things to create the story. Don't throw them away, just keep them there. The Salvation Army, Goodwill, uh, Ross, um, any of these places so that you can buy these very inexpensive things during sales time. Christmas is a great time to make these purchases. Any big sales that they're having, just purchase these little items so that you can utilize them. One of my uh, favorite thing is three branches are fun um, because you can uh, set up a branch and hang things from it. You can hang jewelry from it. You can hang t-shirts from it. You can hang, hang sunglasses from it. You know, it's a, a cheap, inexpensive, so you see one outside in Golden Gate Park or in your neighborhood, grab it, dry it out, and let's utilize that, right? So this is what I mean by props in your windows that you can change in and change out. Okay, and again, remember, by the way, guys, that you're going to get this video later, so you can clip through it if you need to go through this list of things I'm suggesting that you assemble. Okay, develop a theme. Okay, so I personally like to create a story. So instead of um, making it very stagnant and saying, well, it's Christmas, so therefore let me put a snowman in the window, first come up with a theme. So um, instead of Christmas, think Nutcracker. That would be a theme. And from that, you can blow up a lot and add to a lot to your window to create a story around that. Instead of Halloween, think Sleepy Hollow. Instead of Valentine, think Cupid, being mischievous. Instead of Thanksgiving, think of dressing up a turkey, you know? And from all of these, by the way, are things that you can use as jumping off points inside the store because you could have fun promos inside the store as well dressing up the, the turkey i mean you could have depending on the type of store you have you could have kids in sketching you know designing uh things on like uh, like printed out turkeys and just have crayons there to bring the parents in again depending on what type of store you have and the target audience so first before you start dressing the window Think of a theme and think outside the box. Hopefully these will help you. Theme to developing the theme are things to consider. Plan the themes for the entire year. We know, listen, I used to have stores myself and once the business is running, it's a little challenging to now stop and start and let me think of what I need to do. If you've gone through your first year, you basically know the ebbs and flows of your store and you also know the holidays that are significant to you. Plan them out. And actually, you can start now. I'd suggest planning out from 2008 
into 2019 Christmas, you can lay this out. What are the things that I'd like to do for the year on a month to month basis? Um, making sure that you have things and you can slowly assemble those and have them in your storage room. Schedule assembly dates. These are the days when we're going to do our windows. Schedule your removal dates because you wanna make sure that's timely, right? You don't wanna leave, let's say New Year's until February, that would be a no-no. Um, so schedule your removal dates. You can lay it out, give yourself reminders on the calendar, whether digitally or by paper, whatever makes sense to you. And then additional suggestion, assemble uh, dates uh, should, should be on your busy day, okay? It sounds a little quirky, but Paula, we're busy. I can't get staff to actually change out the window on that days. I'll tell you something though, it becomes a fantastic marketing thing because the thing that all retailers know about folks um, when they come into their, your store, people are naturally nosy. They love it, they want to see what's going on. Don't cover the window. What's going on in the store? What, what are they doing? When we had our stores, what we would do, um, I'm sorry, Saturday would be our busy day and we would dress it on Saturday. And you would see people stopping with their Starbucks, watching the event, then other people see other people watching and they, what's going on there? It becomes a fantastic marketing for you, you know? So dress up the window um, during your busiest day. That's my suggestion because that becomes an additional marketing for you. Okay, following the theme, I wanted to give you some more ideas to just keep, keep you rolling. Of course, um, another one would be Chinese uh, New Year's. Uh, Christmas, this is a nice example of Christmas. Easter. Father's Day. And by the way, guys, these stickers are now super affordable. Vista Print, printers in general. This is actually a film seal that goes on the window. You can do it quickly from your computer. And a lot of times these uh, onlines have templates already there for you. Create it, seal it onto the window with a little bit of light soapy water with a squeegee. You know, just kind of clip, and it will be easy to remove from the window as well. So inexpensive things that you could do on the window right here. Fourth of July, um, Labor Day, right? So instead of the obvious flags, this is another look feel. Hey, Paula, quick question. Yes? Sure. So what if you don't or are not that creative um, or don't have a creative bone in your body? What are some of the choices we have for that? Well, uh, this is the, 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 um, the options if you don't have a creative uh, bone in your body. Because if you start with a theme, instead of trying to come up with, let me sit down right now and think of an idea of what to do. Now, if I start off with Christmas and use the Nutcracker instead, we already have our visual, right? Because we've seen the Nutcracker play, or there are videos online, or there's going to be examples of pictures online of the Nutcracker, the musical, right? Um, and so we can sit there and go, okay, this is a look. Um, they have a, a this in the background and that in the background. All you're doing is tearing that sheet out and seeing if you can replicate that in the window. Just simply look at the sheet, whatever you find online, and replicate, let's say, Nutcracker. You know, so don't, you don't have to, to try to be a, a super creative person. Use your tear sheets to help you along. And that's why we want to come up with themes and utilize what's already out there instead of starting with just blanket and just saying Halloween, doing something instead that says Sleepy Hollow. We've seen the movie, we've read the book. For those of you who've read the books, there's tons of photos online of what Sleepy Hollow and what that would would look like and now all you're doing is taking that picture and trying to replicate it in your window and making sure that the star of the show is the product in your store you know so um but at, let's keep going along um, um making sure that we tell the whole story and um okay and here's another one with mother's day again i'm just giving you a couple of visuals to show you how that would translate Look at this one, this is a very easy one. I wanna sh show you guys this right here. Hopefully you can see my cursor. These are just suction cups to the window. So this is not a prominent I I item. And of course it's locked into the window. And look at this, this is clothes hangers. And all they did was pictures of their customers' families, so Mother's Day, you know, and put that in the window. 
you know, so this is a very simple thing that they just did. And again, removable. Um, and then look at this one. These are items that you can buy in your favorite um, uh, uh, store where you like to, to do any kind of projects. You can hang these from the ceiling. They usually come on vines with the clear push pin that we talked about and just push them into the ceiling above you and let them hang down. And that, that's it, you're done and dropping a little bit of leaves on the floor and that dresses around your clothing. And notice the bag in the window as well on what looks like a crate, you know? So, but the leaves actually create like a little bit of a story for you, right? So again, go with, it doesn't have to be hardcore. Thanksgiving, there needs to be X or uh, Halloween, there needs to be a jack-o'-lantern. You know, come up with a story and it's going to allow you to be more creative. Again, you don't have to think outside the box. What am I going to do? I'm not creative. Get online and use, use Google as your friend. See what is out there. Go through magazines when you see magazines that you love. Tear out that sheet. If you see a great photo um, from your local opera house or something like that of a great picture about, um, you know, whatever opera is going on during opera season, let's try to replicate that in the background. What can I use from my store to put in and get that look? You know, and again, this is a reason why I want you to go out to the, the uh, craft stores and pick up a few items that you can use. If you make the plan now for your heads and flows and all those holidays are coming up, you'll already have a plan of, okay, what's coming up next? Let's start with 2008. We know that um, uh, Halloween is coming next. After that, we're having Thanksgiving. Then we're having Christmas. That's going to roll right into New Year's, right? So there's four major things. And um, that's not even adding in all the religious holidays. If it's significant for your neighborhood, you might want to add those in as well. So right there and then, we have four holidays that we can plan for. Halloween, I gave you a freebie, the Sleepy Hollow. Let's go online and see if we can find some photos, depictions of what the, the, uh, the book looks like. And let's see if we can replicate that. So right now you can start slowly getting a few little prop items that you can reuse. Think about reusing, guys. You know, I found that great branch. It was in my storage room forever because that's what I would use and break that out all the time and just put things on it. Um, and it was like a nice, simple uh, easy, um, very creative way of doing the window, all right? And so, like I said, I just wanted to drop in a few things for you guys, but let's move to uh, number three, okay? So number step number three is think about lighting. It's Your visual is not going to work if someone drives past your window, and the, have you ever seen those windows, or you may be experiencing this yourself, where it's so dark on the inside, that even though you've done a fantastic job at dressing the window, no one can see through because it's not properly lit. So by the way, lighting is going to be an important focal point to any design. Um, even if you're just decorating a room for your house, you're going to hear the interior designer talk about lighting as uh, an important key tool. So lighting is going to be just as important for when you're dressing your window as well. So, um, what I'm going to suggest to you, if you haven't already done it, is you need to call in an electrician um, and have them drop in these very simple lights that you can notice this baluster right here. You can actually click that in and take that out um, as you need to. And these, this, once um, the electrician has put this track lighting in for you, you can take these out and change them out as you need to. I usually suggest, though, keeping it to the color of your ceiling so it blends in as seamlessly as possible. And like I said, you can buy these at Lowe's and Home Depot, um, and they just click in very easily. So you can take them out and, and drop them in if you need more or less light. Um, the reason why you want this, you want it closer to the window so you can aim it at your, um, the, your display item because you want folks to be able to see what's in the window. All right. Okay. And that's my suggestion. <laughs> I forgot to click it for you, you know. Here's some simple examples. Uh, there's a lot of options out there so you're not 
relegated to just kind of one type and variety. Um, there are uh, uh, tons of selections. Um, again, make sure that it blends to the ceiling. Um, they have very different look. You can go with a chrome. You can go with something more matted. Um, you can even go with like a, a black if you want to. Um, but I wouldn't suggest the black unless your ceiling is black for some reason. But I think it's going to be important to make sure that they're as invisible as possible. The reason why I suggest um, these items, by the way, that click in, it allows you the ability to aim it at your merchandise item. So if something's a little bit further down, you want to aim it at it, you know, aim it at the clothing or, you know, I, I pointed out the uh, item earlier of the bag on the crates. We might want to aim that lower so it hits the bag so it's nicely lit up. So again, once your, your folks are going past, your potential target audience is walking by your store, we want it to be nicely lit up. Yes, even during the day, we want it to be on daytime running lights here so that they can see it as they're going by. As the cars are moving a little bit faster than the humans, we want them to be able to see it as well. and again as well as the uh, folks that have your lights on and before I start showing you some examples of what I, um, how this looks when it's lit, lit up I also want to let you know that yes during the day but when your store is um, closed at nighttime if you could uh, make sure that you mention to the electrician that you want this to be almost on a separate unit so that you can leave this light on during the night and have it on a timer so it goes off at a certain time super late let's say two o'clock one o'clock in the morning have it go off then but we want it to stay lit even when the rest of the store is off we want your window to stay lit and highlighting your items and these are some examples of why okay all right notice that we've um highlighted like with this window there's only a few items in it and the bags are nicely lit up Okay. And actually, I'm just going to go back really quickly because I noticed that I'm like jumping past a couple of focal points that I want to discuss besides lighting. So we have lighting here with our penguins, but I also wanted to show you this. Okay, so make it all about a product if you need to. So let's say that you want to show off the product a little bit. We don't want the window to be overly cluttered, and I want to make sure that you make it all about the product that you need to sell. So not your cheapest product in the store that sells really well regardless. It's a popular product. Everyone knows it. We don't need to have that in the window. We want to move those items that are different and interesting and maybe a little bit more higher price. We want to pull them in that way, make it interesting, right? So make it all about the product. Notice that when you look at this here, the first thing that we see, we know that they're selling purses. We can see it very, very clearly. It's not cluttered by a ton of other things. Step five, it's all about the height and balance. The reason why it's so important that there's highs and lows here is because again, as humans, if you have everything on the same level at the same color, let's say with the same background, we're going to miss it, right? So we need variation so that we can see it. Also, as folks are going by, the higher items are going to be seen by people going by, right? We wanna make sure that we um, highlight and feature as much as possible. So use items of different sizes and create literally physically highs and lows so people can see it at varying heights. Folks going by are gonna see the full presentation, uh, but people driving by, may uh, we want them to still be able to see a portion of it. And by the way, guys, if you're looking at this and saying, oh geez, Paula, how am I gonna achieve this? One thing that um, I'd like you to add to the shopping list fishing uh, wire okay so it's clear you can't really see it from a distance actually you can't see it that well up close either you're tying this on you're knotting it you're push pinning it to the ceiling and hanging it down that's way you would achieve this simple look so you'd balance it out let's say you have a fish uh, wire here and uh, right here as well and you're push pinning it into the ceiling and varying it at different heights okay Okay, here again is an, um, a look at height and balance. 
here goes another example of this. Um, I dropped this one in because I had actually used this a long time ago for my store as well. And you're looking at this and saying, oh, wow, this looks a little pricey. How am I going to actually achieve this? But what we actually did is we utilized things that were in the store and created height and balance and things that found items. So, um, you know, of course, I had some baskets. Um, I had some uh, stacked on items. Um, I had rocks. I did this whole uh, uh, display. But again, this was the inspiration to give me height and balance and variation. Again, what are you going to come up with based on what you have in your store? And again, just look around your store first. Um, look around at the things that you're receiving from your vendors because sometimes you know, they send you things in these interesting packaging items. Uh, you know, can we utilize some of those items in our windows? Another example of height and balance. And again, this is sunglasses. And I know with sunglasses, we're talking about something that's tiny, right? It's very small. How do I uh, vary that uh, to make sure that folks can see it? Okay, so let's now go right into the assembly. So again, um, before I go into height and assembly, let me grab a couple of these questions really quickly. Jerry, should I just go ahead and grab them or um, can you review them for me? Hold on. Yes. You, we've already answered those questions, so you're fine. Oh, we did get all the questions. Okay, good. I want, wanted to make sure that I got all the questions for you guys. Again, the big one that I know Jerry wanted to ensure that if person, uh, Paula, how am I going to get those ideas? Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Creative folks are already out there. You know, invest in uh, great design magazines. Um, get onto Pinterest, see what's out there, type into um, uh, Google your theme. You know, I get this, one of the themes that we've been discussing is Sleepy Hollow. That would be a theme for Halloween, right? And just see the photos that comes up, print those off, tear those from the magazine, organize that. And then don't go broke doing this, by the way. I mean, I'm a big fan of found items. You know, and also what's going on at uh, old, uh, Salvation Army and Goodwill. Can I grab a few things that I will be able to reuse month to month in the window? Um, I also suggested branches as a great display item. And again, these uh, closeout stores are always having great sales. So what do they have there that we can keep in our storage um, so that we can reuse this? So I don't want you to go broke here doing this, but again, don't reinvent the wheel, tear out those items and just follow along with the theme, okay? So assemble and planning. Okay, so I would lay, the, the big killer here is in the planning. Remember earlier I said in and make that assembly date a very busy day because we want to use that assembly as a form of marketing because when people see that you're dressing up the window and you're doing all of these fun things they're apt to stop and look and what's going on and seeing what's going on and make sure that like you let your staff know to wave at folks when they're looking say hi to the kids so it creates that community as well the the closeout date where you take it out of the window make that a quiet day make that your quietest day let's say if you need to like break that down or something like that if you need to um of course it makes sense to have both of them on the same day so what day are we going to um uh, assemble it um plan it out um have some stock items ready for you for yourself that's going to make all a world of difference because if you're a one person shop right now you've just opened times of the essence and so you really want to plan it out plan a month in advance you know uh you know a killer retail window display takes some time to create and especially as jerry said i'm not a super creative person you want to just take your time and go through a couple of tiers look at pinterest and say okay um we're in september right now i'd like you to start planning october so let's say we're going to assemble a good planning time for october would be the 15th it's right before Halloween, unless you want to take advantage more of the whole month to do Halloween, the week before. Um, and 
plan it out right now. Check out Pinterest, see what's out there. What do I already have and what do I need to get and assemble? Create your theme as we talked about, right? Remember the story. So don't just say Halloween, I'm gonna do a ton of jack-o'-lanterns in the window. You know, um, there are great books out there. That's another suggestion to help you with the theme. You know, what book, type into Google, what books are there around Halloween? You know, focused on the story of Halloween. And just see what comes up and roll with that. You know, that's a really great way of thinking outside of, of your um, uh, box. Uh, choose props to frame your display. And only a few key uh, pieces of merchandise to show off, please. Don't try to put everything in the window. We, I gave you that picture of the stadium when we first started. Too much in the window is too much for folks to process and you're going to lose them. So we wanna keep it simple and straightforward, okay? So again, let me repeat this. About a month in advance, create a theme, remember the story, choose props, Start with what you have in your store first. Start with whatever found items. And I know a lot of you have that, that uh, American garage. I know there's a lot in your garage. Go shop in your garage. See what's in there that you can reuse. And then go shopping elsewhere. And you know, let's utilize that. If it's just sitting in your garage, it's not getting used. Let's use it in the store to make some money. And then, again, only focus on a few key pieces of merchandise to show off. All right, let's move on to the next batch here. Okay, so I'm gonna run through these because I know, you know, I wanna make sure that I'm very mindful and respectful of your time here. Um, thanks for tuning in everyone today. So uh, find one focal piece. So even if, let's say you're going to put 12 things in the window, but what's going to be that one item that's really different and interesting that you wanna pop out? Um, probably a higher price item, um, something in a bold color different. Because again, this is about think drama, performance, right? It's not just let me put a couple of things in the window, I'm done. One of the best windows I've ever seen is a piping store that's actually in my neighborhood as you get off the highway. And they use their copper piping and sh copper sheets, and they're always doing something fun in the window. If they can do that with copper piping, you can do this with great product in your store. Layer the heights, we talked about varying the heights. Keep display at eye level for the passerby, but don't forget the drivers by, right? Um, create so that they can, um, they can get basically a snapshot into your store, okay? Um, so it's just a little bit of a snapshot into your store. So um, I know a lot of folks, and, and I see a lot of windows doing this where they'll have like a sheet behind their display. Um, and I see it, you wanna create a canvas so that they focus on the, the items. You know, see, for me, once you get their attention and they're standing in front of your window, I want them to not only see this gorgeous display, I want them to be able to also look into your store. Remember we talked about human beings are naturally nosy. We want to work with that. We don't want to create this blackout sheet. So um, I know a lot of folks do that unless it's the way your store is structured. Um, I would say stay away from that. Oops. I think I might have missed the, okay. Um, let me just uh, run through this really quickly, guys, um, because these are going to be important. I know I need to start wrapping up. Limit your palette. Don't do too much. At least three colors. Don't overdo it. Um, include uh, the faces of your customers. Um, we talked about that Mother's Day example. Uh, that's a great um, uh, idea. Feature customers wants, not needs. Needs is like water. I need to drink a, a cup of water. The want is like things that I probably shouldn't buy, but wow, that looks so impressive. I need to buy it. Go with their wants, not their needs, when you put select the items that you want to put in the window. All right? Keep it clean. All right? There's so many folks who don't clean up their stores as often as they should because it's busy or the window. Keep the window nice and clean so when they look in, there's no dust, there's no distraction, there's no trash. Avoid the sale, 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 sale all the time. Okay? And um, avoid holidays in the middle of the month. Don't overfill your windows. Change out monthly at least, all right? And I'm gonna slowly pace through the rest of this so that you have it for the video so you can check on it later. But if you follow these, this should make for a great window. So let me time this through for you.
These are just some simple examples of places that you can go to get items. We talked about this already. Turn on your lights, okay? Um, can I do this one really quickly, guys? Do I have like a minute on this one? Okay, thank you. Um, so a lot of folks, we talked about this earlier about making your lights so that they stay on for a period of time. Bring in an electrician so that they have them on a timer for you so they're going off after a certain period of time. But it's gonna be important that you know that clients are still shopping long after your stores are closed. So they need to be able to see your window. So keep your windows uh, um, lit if it's possible, all right? Um, and I'm just gonna go straight into some examples so that you can see it of what windows look like when they're lit at nighttime because your shoppers are still shopping. And this is a flower store, guys. This is an example of what a block looks like when uh, the, the lights aren't lit. Again, we're in the business of visual and moving products and clients are looking at our products every time they go by, all right? And so um, in summary, um, not just a theme, but create a story in your window. Create varying heights, that's going to be important. Change out your windows frequently and timely. Don't have your New Year's window all the way into February. Keep your windows displayed clean. That's such a big pet peeve of mine because I'll look in the window and I'll see all these things. Lights on, it's gonna help you um, as well. So uh, thank you guys. Hopefully this was uh, very helpful for you. Reach out to us for um, uh, and with any questions to follow up. And in closing, I want you to remember, um, call, reach out to your local county uh, for one-to-one -one con consultation. Please like your local SBDC, whether it's San Francisco, San Mateo, Alameda is also another local one. My name is Paula Madison Sierra. Our moderator today was Jerry Irving. Um, thank you to Angel Cardoz of uh, San Francisco SBDC and also for Robert Schaffner of um, San Mateo SBDC. Again, any questions? Please utilize your local SBDC when they can help you. And I know that when you heard the word free, you're thinking, is it great quality? By the way, you've already paid for this in your tax dollars as well, so you might as well use us. We're here to make sure that you have wonderful economic impact your county that you serve. So thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. And if there's any questions, please reach out to us and let us know.